Now, when I first saw this question, I said, whoa, hold up now. He may be on to something. First one came from my guy, Joshua. He said, is the trade deadline the Ravens' last chance at keeping Lamar for the long run? What's up, Engraven? Great work on keeping the flock updated. Is this trade deadline Baltimore's last chance to prove to Lamar that he should stay in Baltimore? Let's not sugarcoat it. After 2019, this Ravens front office has been flat out helpless to Lamar outside of the draft. Uh, Though Lamar may not speak out against EDC in the front office, the people around him, like his mother and personal circle, are most likely not ignorant to how negligent the office has been by not opening a bank to get Lamar weapons like every other front office in the AFC does for their quarterbacks. Not just the AFC, but the NFC too. But anyway, he said, is this deadline their last chance to prove to Lamar and his people that they are competent. Otherwise, Ravens Nation may be shocked when he dips out in the offseason. That's a really good question. That's a really, really, really good question. And yeah, like I said, I always say after uh, after 2019, in 2020, that's when the nation should have been like, all right, wow, this dude, we ain't really know about him in 2018. 2019, he went out and won the MVP. All right, let's really like go in for him now. But 2020, nope, they ain't do it. 2021, nope, they ain't do it. They, a lot of times they, they do a lot of bare minimum stuff 2022, nope, they ain't do it They traded away his favorite target in Hollywood Never really replaced him I know a lot of people say, oh well Rashad Bateman was to replace Hollywood Well you could add both You could add both Or you could have really added to Bateman and Duvernay and Prochet and Wallace or whatnot. But nope um, and, and there were opportunities But they didn't take those opportunities um, So yeah, this, this trade deadline he, Yes and no Because the question is Is this trade deadline The Ravens last chance At keeping them off For the long run Yes and no um, Yes It does provide them An opportunity To show like Hey we, we, we really want you to succeed We really want to do What we can But at the same time um, I will say no Because They've already shown you Who they are And I mean While we're hoping that it works out with like the Deshaun Jackson signing, Andy Isabella, whatever's going to happen with that. We hope that those work out. And obviously the guys who are still here, like a Rashad Bateman, like a Duvernay and whatnot, and the rest of them. But they, they've they already shown you who they are. So if they show you who they are, what's going to change between this trade deadline and the offseason? Yeah. Welcome to another episode of Questions from Subs. And the next question came from Niwan. He said, Hey, Engraven, not sure if I should send questions to this email or what. Let me know. Yeah, you sent it to the right email. Thanks for not sending it to the wrong email, because if you would have sent it to the wrong email, then it wouldn't be on this episode. Anyway, he said, Question, what are the chances of Harbaugh letting Greg go or demoting him to run game coordinator and promoting someone else on the staff to offensive coordinator? Uh, if we lose in dynamic fashion on Thursday to Tom Brady, if we lose three straight games, let me know your thoughts. Um, hopefully... Hopefully we don't have to go through that, but I could see it happening. Um, but the chat demoting him to run game coordinator, no. Greg Roman ain't going for no demotion. It's either he's offensive coordinator or he's nothing. Nobody's gonna accept the demotion. Um, if they do one of them things, like I can see them doing one of them things. Like, oh, we mutually agreed to part ways or something like that. But he ain't gonna be demoted to run game coordinator. Um, but I think. For that to happen, the offense will just have to continue to be underwhelming. Trouble not in the locker room, but in the coach's room. Next question came from my guy Julius. He said, what's up, Engraven? Phew, this season. Of course, I want to thank you for the content before I go in, so thank you. No, th- thank you for watching it. Uh, okay, now, the defense. Mike McDonald has no idea how to put together personnel packages for the defense to operate at their maximum potential. Why does he keep lining Kyle Hamilton up at outside linebacker or put him in man-to-man situations with speedy receivers? Look, man, they ain't going to use Kyle Hamilton as a safety, so why not use him as a pass rusher? It worked last week, so might as well keep doing it, right? Uh, He said, I'm confused. Would he not be more of a threat dropping back and having Peters over top for help uh, or put Hamilton on top of Humphrey uh, for help? Uh, I think that would help keep a lot of plays in front of them. Where's Pepe? There's a lot of confusion in the red zone with the defense as if the calls in the headset don't match the calls on the field or vice versa. Look at the film. The offense has kind of, well, okay, as far as the defense, um, we're getting to that point because, it's, again, it's a new defense. New defensive coordinator, new defense. 
everybody's still learning. But we get into that point. It's, I mean, it's week eight. It's 17 games in the season. You're getting ready to go into your eighth game. It's time for stuff to, like, really start clicking. Because we we getting past the point where it's like, oh, everything's new, so maybe the guys are still adjusting, which they are, but still. Uh, but at the same time, Geno Stone, he's really getting a feel for things because he's really getting a lot more playing time than expected with the Marcus Williams injury. Uh, that I don't think they really bumped up Kyle Hamilton's play time yet. But um, they're getting some guys back from injury who they didn't have before. So maybe just maybe just guys just clicking a little or they learning to click a little more. So I guess that's that. But we get into that time where it's going to be like, all right, <laughs> is this thing gelling or not? But anyway, uh, he said, oh, uh, the offense has kind of fizzled. Where's Slade Bowden? Oof, you, that's who you start off with, Slade Bowden? Slade Bowden, just like I think last week, I thought he had already got uh, injury waived, but apparently not. But they released him from the practice squad like two weeks ago. Uh, he said, where's Slade Bowden, Proche, Isaiah Likely, Josh Oliver, Makai Polk, ooh, Makai Polk, uh, Tylen Wallace, Andy Isabella, um, Deshaun Jackson, Bailey Gaither, uh, Victor, Benjamin Victor, wow, you, okay, you, you went through every, you went through, like, everybody at the way in the back of the depth chart, um, but actually, some of these guys are, like, the Ravens' fourth, fifth receivers and whatnot, Second, third, tight ends. Anyway, he said, poor utilization of the personnel and packages. What package do we always see? Lamar, Andrews, Bateman, Ricard, and whatever running back they choose. It's redundant. Either it's Harbaugh holding the coaching system back with his analytics, specific pieces uh, of the philosophy, or the entire philosophy. That's it. That's it. You said it. The, the, it's the philosophy. That's what it is. Ground and pound, ground and pound, ground and pound. The philosophy has been, well, oh, whatever receivers we got out there, we get by. As long as we can pound that rock, that's the most important thing. Play some good defense. It's a philosophy. The, the philosophy is not invested in the offense like that. So expect more of the same. Anyway, he said, we have allowed John to hire all these retirement home coaches or promote a defensive equipment manager to defensive coordinator. Even John was a special teams coach that got gifted with a head coach position. Now, he used to be a defensive backs coach, too. Uh, but anyway, he said, we have had qualified proven coaches before. Rex Ryan, Jim Caldwell, Gary Kubiak, Dean Pease, Marty Morningweg, Jerry Rossberg, David Culley. Yes, David Culley, assistant head coach, passing game coordinator, wide receiver coach of 2019. Check his work. My opinion, John needs to go. He lost his juice, his play calling judgment. But the most important of all, the locker room. Your thoughts. Mm, interesting one, because uh, as far as the locker room, I, I, I really think. With that, the whole 2012 reunion, I think that's so he could try to get the locker room back. And since they won, that I think that did help. Um, but I still think they got more work to do. Um, but yeah, it's the I, I just think the philosophy just basically needs an overhaul. Next question came from my guy Anthony. He said, offense or defense? How's it going, Ravens? Hope everything is good. Everything is really good. I appreciate you asking. So with the trade deadline approaching, would you want the Ravens to trade for an offensive player or a defensive player? And who? Me? Um, a dr dream scenario for me would be DeAndre Hopkins. So, but I would go offensive player. Dream scenario would be DeAndre Hopkins. Though. But anyway, he said, me personally, I'd rather defense. Well, reason why? I like our weapons. Yes, we can have more, but what's the point in adding to the offense if Giro won't use them right? If I, I trust me, I understand that. And we've been talking about that uh, with the volume, the volume, the uh, yeah, with the usage of guys not maximizing their potential. Trust me, I get that. But you still don't want to undercompensate weapon wise, even though. Yeah. It, and look, worst case scenario. Think about this. If Giro doesn't use guys, then wouldn't that put even more eyes on him and really more eyes on this Ravens team and their philosophy? Wouldn't that put more eyes on them and, and open more people's eyes like, man, y'all got this, that, 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 that. And y'all still can't have success on offense. So y'all still not using them. Like, think about it. It would put more eyes on it. Would it change anything? I don't know, but it would put a lot more eyes on it so a lot more people could take notice. But anyway, he said, I feel like Giro is holding Lamar Jackson back, and I feel like it's Mike McDonald's first year as our defensive coordinator. Well, I mean, it is his first year. He's a rookie head coach. I mean, rookie defensive coordinator, excuse me. Giro been here long enough. That vault should have been open. Uh, yeah, and that tight end under center with Andrews is cute. Exact. That's exactly what it is, cute. Uh, but is that all we're going to get? We won the game against the Browns. Yeah, that's great, but it still wasn't the prettiest. I'm sure the team is tired of stressing in 
uh, stressing about blowing leads just like us fans sorry this is so long but i had to get it out nah it's all good man you, this this wasn't long at all especially compared to a lot of other emails we get so i appreciate you next question came from my guy greg and be more he said angry and hope everything is good for you and the fam it was good to see gus the bus ed was back i think gus has been uh, he should be the primary guy and drake and hill should be the complimentary backs is the way to go oh yeah that, that's one thing that raven's gonna get right that gus will be their guy moving forward for sure that's one thing you can count on them to knock it out of the park but anyway he said do you think gus is the main guy now going forward or will it be a game by game design between him drake and hill on who gets the most running opportunities since they already gave gus his contract extension then they could really max gus out now because remember before gus got paid they were like holding him back and when you hold him back you could be you could look back and be like hey look gus you see your numbers i mean they were straight nice average for you for nice average yards per carry but you ain't, you ain't hit a thousand you ain't hit a thousand but you, I mean, you put in some work though. But so we, we ain't gonna pay you like no thousand y'all back. You got close, but no cigar. But anyway, you anyway. <laughs> they just, I feel for them, man, because you 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 could see it, man. You you could see you could see how they did Gus man over the years, man. Gus will be rolling. Take him out of the game. Gus will be on fire. Take him out of the game. Gus is killing it. Take him out of the game. It's, it's business, baby. Um, but anyway, he said uh, last last game they celebrated Super Bowl forty seven team was some of the memories from that season that still sticks with you. Um, fourth and twenty nine in San Diego and Jacoby Jones in Denver are two plays that still sticks in my mind more than anything else. Oh, so yeah, from that season, um, yeah, that just the Chargers game as a whole, because uh, I thought it was over. Uh, it was looking looking bad. It was late in the game. I thought the Ravens were about to lose, but they didn't. Um, the Mile High America, I remember almost like passing out from just running around and screaming at the sports bar that we were at. Um, them finally like beating Brady at his crib in a playoff game and, and that advancing to the suit. It was just crazy, man. It was crazy. It was, it was a lot of crazy moments from that season, man. Um, all the Jacoby Jones plays, all the Torrey Smith plays, Flacco, the Ray Rice, Bolden, Pitta, just... The season was just crazy overall, man. And it led to the best kind of craziness at the end of the season, the Super Bowl. Next question came from my guy Mike. He said, hey, Greg, what do you think it would take for the Ravens to fire Greg Roman? Some fans have said we don't need to sign an elite wide receiver in free agency. I disagree 100%. However, even if the Ravens finally did get that guy, he wouldn't throw, thrive in Roman's system. No, he wouldn't thrive in Roman's system, but I don't think he would even thrive in Harbaugh's philosophy. Um, but in order to to fire Roman, it would just have to be just a complete collapse from consistent collapse from the offense. And the last question on this episode came from my guy Jason. He said, "Carry over from your post game thoughts." And great one, happy victory Monday to you and team. Keep it clean. First, it's clear the missing players slash pieces that returned yesterday were wildly missed in games prior. Justin Houston, Gus Edwards, and Rashad Bateman. Their presence showed immediately. Lamar's body language completely shows that playing in spite of this stagnant offense has gotten to him. He already entered the season at the disadvantage of dealing with contract negotiations, uh, this being a contract year and the scrutiny that he faces specifically. I know Lamar brands himself to be one of those players who ignore the outside noise. Eight times out of ten, he does. But this year is different and he's human. No, I think he hears a lot of that outside noise. I mean, he's shown that over the years, that he hears a lot of the outside noise. Uh, I, I, I never forget from jump, his, his first week one game starting, um, where he in, in Miami against the Dolphins. Uh, where he threw the five touchdowns, and then right after that, in the in the uh, in the locker room, he was like, "Oh, not bad for a running back." So he hears all that stuff. He, he hears, and it would um, that could be like a gift and a curse all at the same time. Because if you're showing people that you hear all that stuff, yeah, you could prove them wrong, but at the same time, they know that they could talk and they they could try to get to you that way. But anyway. He said, this all uh, culminates into a question you asked previously. Has Harbaugh lost the locker room? He definitely lost touch in some facets because these games where we come out all past to start uh, the second half with no positive yardage, the first thing I should think uh, is Harbaugh flipping out on Roman through that headset uh, and flat out the Ravens need leaders internally. It's been noted and said, and it's true. Thanks for your time and for your content. Appreciate it. Yeah, that's true, man. The, the, the leadership is a little bit like rocky right now it's a little bit shaky and and i don't know who those guys are um i know marlon he stepped up recently more as a more vocal leader um calais campbell has always been a leader type and whatnot um but i think they just need more they need more guys with fire like that marcus peters type of fire 
Um, they need guys who's gonna who's gonna try to just get them right, get them right. Not not get them right in a in a post game presser, not get them right in practice. Well, get them right in practice, but during the games, if stuff ain't going good, like somebody to really like pull everybody to the side, uh, pull Lamar to the side, pull the offensive line to the side, like get in people's face and really get them fired up because stuff just ain't clicking right now all the way. Yeah, hey, they they won on Sunday, which is great. But it's like we, we, we continue to see a lot of the same flaws in this team. So they need somebody that's just really going to like a, a, a player coach almost. Because um, this is something that you would want to have the coaches do, but it's different coming from a player. Because with a player, other players can relate to the other players on a more personal level. Like if you're facing something in the game and you're struggling and whatnot, a coach could come over and talk to you. Hey, yeah, you got to do this better. Da, 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 da. But if it's a player... Then it, it'll resonate a lot different Alright now I thought the last question Was going to be the last question And it was supposed to be the last question And I even edited the video And it was the last question But while I was editing My guy Gene He sent in another question And the only reason that we putting it in there Is because This is a very short week And this is going to be The One of only two episodes Of questions from subs Before the game Against the Bucks So Shout out to my guy Gene You literally Just made it Anyway he said changes. Um, hey, what's going on in Raven? Hope everything is well down there in sunny Florida. Yeah, everything is really good. I appreciate you, man. Do you think Lamar will be a Raven after this season is over? No, uh, I don't believe so due to the fact that Roman is the OC. I think it's, it's more than just Roman, but let's keep going. He said, I believe it's going to come down to it's me or him type of deal. Well, I mean, the Ravens have continued to construct an offense for him and not Lamar. So... I mean, I feel like they already gave them gave him their answer when it comes to that. But anyway, uh, Lamar will have to speak up for himself and let the office know what he what he wants done for him to resign. That's the thing. If he does that, and who knows, maybe he's doing that now. We don't know. But say, for instance, that's the situation. Lamar's like, all right, this is what I need y'all to do uh, in order for me to resign. He would have to make sure those things get done. He would have to. The don't don't bank on no promises. Don't bank on no no wishing well. No hope that oh I hope the Ravens will do it. Or they told me they're gonna do it, so I believe. No 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 no. It needs to be done. But anyway, he said um, there has been plenty of times that Lamar has called out Roman, but no one seems to hear him. I don't know if it's the slight injury he has uh, or he's just out there to be out there. But you can tell he isn't too happy right now, and that's the biggest problem. Uh, back to 2019, that team was having a blast, and look what it did. They played great until the playoffs. But let me know what you think. And like Lamar may be with the Ravens, I'm out. <laughs> Blessings. Appreciate it. <laughs> what a way to end that. Um, the whole L L Lamar, he's clearly off, as we can all tell. Um, he, in the presses, he just looked dejected, deflated. And it could be a number of things. He could be upset with himself. Like, man, I, I just feel like I ain't been playing that good the last couple of games. I ain't been playing as good as I can, and I ain't been playing as good as I should be. Um, he could be dealing with something that we don't know about. Could be that. Or it could be it could be that he's not happy. We don't know. Um, but based off of the timing of everything and just the way that things went, especially with them winning because they won the game and he still wasn't looking happy, that, that, that led a lot of us to believe it has something to do with the Ravens. But only time will tell. Only time will tell. And eventually, uh, we're going to find out one way or another. So, uh, we'll see how this thing goes. Hopefully, we can see a happy Lamar in Florida against the Bucks on Thursday. Yeah.